Hi folks, this is Dave from Race Coordinator. I'm doing another video for you. Um, this time it's a video to demonstrate some more features from the Vinacy Track Interface along with some new, a brand new alpha, re alpha only release feature um, within Race Coordinator, um, a new track, a new race format rather, um, that I want to talk about. It's pretty exciting. Um, first of course, the disclaimer, if you've watched any of these videos, it's the same one I always give. Um, I am the author of the Race Coordinator software, and I am partnered with the Vi with Viasu. Um, together, Viasu and Race Coordinator provide a 100% plug-and-play track interface um, that I believe is one of the best, if not the best, um, hardware software solutions out there for slot car racing. Um, you know, but that said, I am partnered with them, so anything I say about the track interface, about the Viasu track interface... You know, take it for what it is. I am partnered with them. Um, I have no monetary incentive. However, um, any money that I make from the Viasu track interface sales goes directly to charity, as does any donations I receive for my software. So anything I make or whatever goes to charity and not to me. Um, so that keeps me pretty, um, uh, pretty, pretty unbiased. But again, take it for what it's worth. Um, so that said, I want to talk about um, some. So I want to talk about the crash and learn software feature and that that is supported in the alpha release of today's uh, of today's version of the of race coordinator. Um, what I have is a um, fully blown out uh, track interface provided by Viasu. It has. Uh, let me pan out. Actually, what you're looking at right now is the big screen. But let me pan out. The the track interface has nine track sensors on it. Um, three for each lane. Um, those are the, the starts, the start finish, the, the, the lap counting sensor where the cars are right now. Then up here it has, um, right there, that is a pit exit line. Um, so what, what, what in the, in the alpha release of the software, cars can, cars can refuel anywhere between those two sensors. Then the third set of sensors is here, and this is used for, um, for segment timing. So you can calculate the segment time between the start line and that, and that sensor, and then between that sensor and the start finish line and see, see how you're doing. So, um, as far as like track regions go, and you can have as many segment se sensors as you want. I have, I have one plus the start finish line, um, but you can add as many as you want. Um, on top of that, up on the up on the start finish line, there is the LEDs, the three LEDs here. These are the heat leader indicator lights, and then of course over here by my computer, you can't really see the LEDs yet because they're not on. But those are the that's the LED start tree that one of the one of the LED start trees that Viasu can provide. Um, on top of all of that, I have per lane relays under the track, and I have per lane call buttons. And so you've seen a you've seen a, pr a video possibly already about. Um, per lane relays and what they're used for, and then the call button, what, what you can do with those. Um, today's, today's, demonstra today's video is going to focus on crash and learn racing and why exactly do I have per lane call buttons. Um, I think it's a very useful feature for, for crash and learn, um, and it's a pretty neat thing you can do with them. So, um, so what crash and learn is, let me get into that. Um, what crash and learn is, is it's a race format that controls how many times you're allowed to de-slot out of the, off, the, off the track crashing. Um, before you get penalized and it has lots of features or sorry lots of options to control how exactly this happens so I think you can read this but um you can set up a crash time and that and that time there is the amount of time in seconds that if a car does not complete a lap it is considered to have crashed so this is if you don't have any relays or any well specifically if you don't have any call buttons um, in particular Perlin call buttons it's a way that the race management system can detect a crash in an analog on an analog track because, you know, if your lap times are supposed to be 10 seconds or, or 5 or 7 seconds and you take 15, probably you crashed. Um, then you can do things like yellow flags on crashing. You can set up the num maximum number of crashes a driver can have before they get penalized or disqualified. You can do all sorts of stuff like multiple crashes within one heat or, sorry, within one lap. You can reset the crash count every heat. You can reset the disc dis disqualified count after every heat. And then you can control how things get penalized. And the, penal the, the penalties are applied to laps and points and, and overall scores and heat scores. So you really have a lot of flexibility in what you can do with this system. Um, so, of course, the primary goal of this system is to teach drivers that coming off the track is bad. We don't like coming off the track. It disrupts the flow of the race. It disrupts everything and ultimately will cause you to lose. So, rather than being so aggressive, you tile it back, dial it back a little bit. And, to, and the best way to learn that is to learn it the hard way, which is, you know, after in this, in this configuration, after two crashes, you get disqualified from the heat. Now, it doesn't disqualify you from the race. So, what that means is that on a disqualification, you will no longer be able to count laps. And so... 
for that heat. And then on your next heat, it will reset. So you'll, you'll basically go back to zero crashes and you can reset, you can crash twice in the next heat. Um, but it teaches you pretty harshly. If you crash early in a heat twice, you know, you'll be out for that whole heat. You're going to lose a lot of laps. You're going to lose, you know, a lot of, a lot of places in the standings potentially. So, so you'll learn pretty quick not to do it. Now, I mentioned that I have Perlane call buttons on this track. The other thing that I have wired up is that since our, since, since there's purling call buttons, when a call button is pressed, race coordinator can tell not only that a call button was pressed, but which call button. So I have call buttons at each of my driver stations, and so I allow a driver to push the button. So this allows for yet another way of doing crash and learn, which is that if a car comes off the track, you can leave it to the driver to push the button, and whichever driver pushes the button is the one that gets credited with the crash, and then you can then you can reslot the cars. You can either you can choose how to do things. You can have your marshal reslot the car of the person who hit the button. You can reslot all the cars that came off, whatever you want. But now RC knows, race coordinator knows that that one particular car has crashed. So it's a pretty neat thing you can do. And finally, you know, a lot of people use um, uh, allow finish races, and they have a problem in which what if a driver doesn't actually run the heat because his car has mechanical problems or whatever? You have to force that car to finish. Well, you could use crash and learn actually to, to cause that to finish because what you could do is you could set up a single crash allowed in the heat, set up the crash time so high that it'll never happen. So like if your lap times are five seconds, set it for 30 seconds. Um, that's six times in the amount of time. Um, as long as you get that car back on and they finish within 30 seconds, it won't be a crash if they're really racing. But if they have mechanical problems and, they, and they're not in the heat, after 30 seconds, they will be timed out and they will get disqualified. And so at the end of the heat, even though it's an allow finish race, race coordinator will think that that driver has already finished because they're disqualified and it'll auto advance the, the system. So you can use this to trick auto advance uh, races into auto advancing for you when a driver doesn't actually race. So um, I just wanted to bring this up so you could see all the various options. And, and again, um, so here we go. So here's your race. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Underneath each of the driver's names, Fart Goblin in particular, there's a small zero. That is the number of crashes they've had. And what I'll do is I'll, 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 run, a, I'll run a crash and then uh, show you what happens here. So let me start this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start the car around the track a bit. Okay, we're going. So there I go. Now I'm going to hit the driver's call button. And what's going to happen is we immediately go to yellow. And if you notice, oops, you know what I did? Ha! Okay, I jumped ahead in the demo. So I hit lane two's call button. Now lane two's not actually in the race, that's the white lane. So nobody got considered, nobody got a crash, but the yellow flag came out. So you can see in this case, because I hit the white lane's call button, Fart Goblin there did not get a crash. So I'm gonna start it back up again. And this time I'm gonna actually hit the blue, the orange call button. So we're in green again. Now this time you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, let's zoom way in. See that one there? That means in the bottom right-hand corner, that is a one, trust me. Um, that means that he's got one crash under his belt. So if he crashes a second time, based on my configuration, he will be disqualified. And now here's where things like Perlane Relays come into, come into play, because in a Perlane, Perlane Relay environment, when he gets disqualified, Race Coordinator will cut power to the track for his lane. So we just ran a lap, and now what I'm going to do is I just ran a lap. I'm going to let the timer now catch, and so in 15 seconds from that last lap, which will be any time now, we're going to see him get disqualified. Tick tock, tick tock, come on, there it is. Okay, so we went yellow, he got disqualified. We actually went yellow only because since he's disqualified, race coordinator knows everybody's done, and so the, the heat is over. Um, you can, I don't know if you can see the DQ there. See the DQ in the bottom right? It's kind of blurry, but it's there under Fart Goblin. That means he got disqualified. Now, if there were other racers in this heat, his lane power would have been terminated, so he would not be able to drive any further, and all the other cars would have continued racing for the 225 that's left in this heat. So you can see for 2 minutes and 25 seconds, there'd be a considerable advantage for the other drivers because he deslotted and because he was disqualified from that. So as it is... He's just in this next heat, so now he moves over to the white lane. I don't know if you can read it or not, but he now has zero crashes again, which means he can race on the white lane now with no crashes, and so he can reset. You know, he reset back to back to that. That's all because of the configuration setup that he has. We could have carried over the DQ status, um, in which case he wouldn't even be allowed to run in this race. That's an, an extreme way of penalizing somebody. You know, if they want DQ in their first heat, that would be the end of their race, basically. So. Um, 
I don't necessarily think that's the right way to go and, and a fair thing to do. But, you know, hey, it depends on how much you want to teach and how fast you want people to learn. So, um, anyway, that's Race Coordinators Crash and Learn. And um, thanks to Viasu for providing me with this awesome track interface. Um, until next time, see you later.